so far solar, the technical training class. This is Mary John, the technical engineer from so far solar. Uh, it's my honor to sit here, share so far solar products with you. And the topic today is so far solar star product, 5 to 20 kilowatt surface hybrid inverter. Uh, because of time limiting, all the questions I will answer at the end of this meeting. And uh, you can also send me your question to email service at sofasolar.com. Okay, let's start it. Uh, today, uh, we will talk about surface hybrid inverter. So those aspects, the futures. As so far traditional, we offer four inch LED screen to you. Through the screen, we can see many useful information, and uh, we can get from the screen many many different details. And uh, for MPVD tracker, we can support 1.5 times overload. For the battery we can accept the range from 180 to 800 volts. And uh, the battery charge is just efficiency we reach 97.8. And uh, it's very flexible to change between different modes from grid time to grid off. And uh, we have two streams of the battery. Each stream we have maximum current is 25 amps, so totally is 50 amps. And uh, we support the unbalanced load, both on grid and off grid mode. But uh, for on grid mode, we have to remember we have to enable the power limited function. Otherwise, just like a normal on grid, it will not support unbalance. Okay, let's talk about interface. Position one is a battery terminal. Position two and three is for the panel input. Position two is a DC switch for panels, and position three is input channel for the panels. Position five and position four is for AC parts. Position four is for load connection. Position five is for grid connection. If you want to use in the off-grid mode, please remember all the load have to be connected in position four. Position 6 is a USB and a Wi-Fi, it is share one port. So if you want to make some change to so the USB, remember, take out the Wi-Fi first. Uh, position 7, this is for DRMS, just the logic interface. Uh, and the position 8 is very important, it's the control. If we want to communication with battery, also communication with meters, we have to make those cable connected in this position. Uh, the position 9 and 10 used for the parallel connected. Just if you want to have couple inverter connected together to get together a big system, you can use this port. And uh, the position 11 is for city. Please remember, so far offer free meter for most of surface hybrid inverter. If you want to use the CT, you have to mention with our sales manager first that you need the CT, not the meters. Otherwise, we offer the meters. And uh, this is the parameter for our inverters. Uh, as I know, most of them already with the sofa solar data locker. Uh, sorry, data sheet. So I just mentioned something very important. First, the number of the stream per MPPT tracker. For five kilowatts, six kilowatts, eight kilowatts, we just have one stream per MPPT. And for 10 kilowatt, 15 kilowatt, 20 kilowatt, we have two streams per MPPT, so totally four streams. Also, the battery input for 
five, six, also the eight, which has an offer only one battery input. So this is the maximum charge, and the discharge currently is 25 amps. And for 10, 15, and 20, we offer two battery terminal. So totally, the charge and the discharge current can reach 50 amps because we have two street. Each street is 25. And uh, the communication interface with the battery is CAN. Some of the uh, battery we can communication through RS485. The easy output data. Uh, we can have the maximum output to unity grid is uh, 5.5 VA. So this is uh, appearing what uh, appearing power, and this is the active power. So most of the question uh, customer just asking about what is the nominal AC power, what is the maximum AC power. And uh, we can see also the backup for the inverters. The backup nominal is five, and uh, the maximum is 5.5. The same with the on-grid. This is the protection we have. We have DC switch, and uh, we have PV reverse polarity protection, output over current protection, uh, output over voltage protection, anti islanding uh, resistance protection, insulation resistance protection, surge protection is a level two, and the battery request protection will also have it. And we also have some feature. The DC terminal we are using is MC4, and uh, the monitoring we offer Bluetooth RS45 Wi-Fi. Also, we have GPS and uh, internet is optional. Okay, this is the system diagram. Uh, normally, a uh, system just uh, construction like this. We have PV panels, battery, critical load, normal load, also the smart meter testing how many power export or input from grid. And uh, this is the electrical connections. So electrical connection shows the details. Connection of AC side of the critical load, normal load, also the cities, and we mark the size of the different components. Start procedures. First, making sure there is no electrical energy, uh, energy in the system. Just making sure if you have other input, uh, inverter or other like uh, battery input or something go to grid, we have to uh, we have to turn it off before we start our inverter. And the step two is turn on the DC switch. After we turn on the DC switch, we have turn on the battery. Normally we have DC isolator between battery and the inverter. Make sure we have to turn it on also at the same time. Then we have to turn on the grid. Then it's a load. After that, inverter will start. For our hybrid inverter, we have make some selection before we go into the system. First is the language. The default setting is English. If you uh, can find some other option and it's your own language, choose your own language. For me, I'm Chinese, maybe I can choose the language in Chinese. Step two is set the inverter time. Step three, safety parameters. Normally, uh, so far, we are all for you the safety document through the USB. So please remember, with the USB, also the safety parameter document from so far, because we have made some selection, the different country code, different policy, uh, different standards through the USB. After that, we have to select the input channel. We have totally four channels for battery and uh, 
and the solder. So I will make an uh, introduction later. Step five, set the battery parameters. If you are using the leasing battery, just choosing the battery type. If you are using the lead acid, please remember you have to set like a current limited or voltage limited for your batteries. And then all the setup is complete. So you can see here, input channel configuration. We have totally four. Battery, we have two input. PV, we have two input. If you just only have one battery, make sure put on battery input one and the battery channel 12 set to do not use. The same, if you just only one string of PV input, just choosing PV input one and set PV input two, do not use. our inverter, we have several different uh, working modes. First, self-using mode. Uh, we have totally four parts. Panels, battery, grid, and load. So we have different uh, priority. Grid is first, battery is second, and uh, the grid is the third. Because for the PV panels, it always generated power, not taking any power. So don't care about this. If PV generation equal to low, the inverter will charge or discharge battery because uh, you can see 3.5 kilowatt from the panels and also 3.5 of the load. So no power to battery and no power to grid. Either we are using for grid first because the load is the biggest. Second, if PV generation larger than load consumption, the power may be will go to the battery first. Uh, as this sample, we have 3.5 from the panel and the load just take uh, 1.48. Battery is not full, so the power from the solar using for load first and the extra will charge to the battery. But for this, battery is full, cannot take too much power. So the power we're using for load first, charging the battery, because the battery now is full. It can only take 2.4 kilowatt, because as you know, our battery maximum can take not only this value. So the extra power will export to grids. If your load is really heavy, the solar power cannot support your load separate. We have to work in together, the panels and the battery will all charge to your uh, to the load. But if your load is too big, the panel and the battery work together cannot spot it. We need to take some power from grids. So the power supply polarity level is PV power bigger than battery, bigger than load. And the power consumption polarity load first, battery is second, the last option is the grids. And uh, for the some country, maybe the power company cannot allow X power to grid. So we have to enable the anti reflex control and uh, making sure CT or meter is in red right position and then we can limit the power X power to grid to uh, come to reach your request. Use mode. Uh, Tab use mode just uh, like a, a situation. As you know, power we are using for load first. But if your load is really big during the daytime, your solar power cannot swap to your load. So your battery always empty. So for this situation, we can uh, 
uh, just uh, change the working mode to turn off using mode. Enable these rows and then select a time to charge the battery. Maybe we can choose in the charging time in the evening because uh, different price for different time zone. The electricity price is different. So we can make sure our battery is always full. So just uh, make our battery much more better and uh, more health. Timing mode. Timing mode, uh, we just mostly we use it during the testing, just uh, check the charge or discharge is working or not. We can set a time, start charge, and the charge and send the charging power to see the charge and the discharging function is good or not. Passive mode, using PC app to send a commander to inverter to program a special mode. Just, uh, as you know, our inverter communication with uh, computer or with the other device by using the RS485 photo. We can follow this photo, write our own program. Using this program, just uh, control our inverter to charge or discharge. Give a commander, then it charge immediately. If you want to discharge, send another commander. So this is the passive mode. EPS mode. EPS, what is the EPS? Emergency power supply. So if PV generation, then the load. Also, the extra power will move to the battery. And uh, if PV power equal to the load, uh, no any power to battery, and the battery just a stand back, no charging on its discharge. And if PV generation less than load, uh, both panels and the battery will work together to support the load. And if the PV generation is good and the load consumption is zero, the power will all storage to the battery, but making sure uh, it cannot uh, store too much power if the battery is full. Application mode. Okay, this is a uh, technical energy storage mode. This is a way. This is a system we always did, and uh, this is the technical one. So everything is here just like a normal construction by panels, batteries, critical load, normal load, and smart meters. But if we missing some components, what should we do? First, system without the PV connection. Our hybrid inverter just working like a battery charge or discharge controller. It can import or export power from the grid, charge the battery, and uh, while grid is lost, maybe working like a backup. Uh, so it means the panels is not very necessary, but it is better to have PV panels because we have these functions. Panel power, the solar power is very important for this system. Second, without the battery. If we're working without battery, the hybrid inverter just working as on-grid inverters. Second, backup mode. If we do not have grid, both panel and the battery will work together to spark your critical load. It's critical load, not normal load. System with multiple inverters. As I mentioned, well, we can have many inverter connection in parallel. The maximum we can have is 10 inverters. 
tanky water working together to have its own PV panels and own batteries. It uh, will work together like uh, one system. We can have one master, other as slavers, just uh, working together uh, to gather together a big uh, storage system. At this moment, the maximum we can have is 10 kilowatt connection in parallel. So remember, maximum is 10.
monitoring is very important. User can uh, the data from the inverter will go through the router and uh, through the internet. Also, the user can check it through our app or our laptop. This is the uh, interface for our apps. Here is the construction, the same with our screen. How many power generated from solar? How many power charge or discharge to the battery? And from which side? We're taking power or extra power? So, so we got the value from this three side. We can identify how many power to load. Uh, we have many different interviews, like uh, how many power daily energy charge, or just uh, like uh, we have, sorry, we have different value for different, uh, this faucet, this component is for the grid. We can know how many power to the, we're taking or export from grid, and for battery charge or discharge from battery, so we can use it. Uh, from this, we can know uh, how many power for our solar is self-using, or uh, we just uh, take it from other place. Daily consumption is monthly, yearly, or totally. And this is a flow chart. We can know uh, how power goes. For this example, we have 4.95 kilowatts from panel. And uh, because the load is really heavy, so no extra power to battery, so battery shows zero. And uh, we still need a 1.55 kilowatt from grid working together to the construction because at least uh, among the battery seems very, very empty. Cannot do any discharge. This is for the graph. We can see here how many daily producing from solar power, the percentage of the self use, and how many power daily consumptions, also the batteries. And this is the graph, so different values. Advantage function. So the backup uh, automatic switch just uh, the time change from on grid and the off grid mode. At this moment, it's 20 ms. And uh, we have the remote upgrade functions. Just as I know, we can change your software vision remotely and uh, make some change of the setting remotely. And uh, we spot. Uh, some monitoring situation, for example, Wi-Fi, GPS, RS-485, also the Bluetooth. We spot the unbalanced anti-reflex functions. And uh, it's compatible with multiple brand leasing batteries, also the lead acid batteries. We have every crew current, and it can help to making sure the power generation as stronger as they can. Without the remotely firmware upgrade, we can also support the local firmware upgrade. It helps to complete with the USB. And if you need it, contact SOFA Solar technical support, and we can offer to you. Multiple application modes suitable for very aware. As I said, just uh, like a different working mode, you can uh, just like a different application without panel, without the battery. Also, you can pair the more inverter together together a big system. All this function is uh, all this function we have it for all inverters. Sales. The HYD sales uh, phase emergency storage have com 
mobility from system can be from 5 to 20, because as you know, it's 5 to 20 kilowatt inverter, and uh, we can have maximum 10 kilowatt connection in parallel. So it's 5 to 20 kilowatt for one dependent energy storage system. So it can be applied in various scenarios, which is uninterfered or independent of supply. To cut, you know, just uh, working like a backup, a supermarket, hotel, factory, school, or hospital farm, mostly like this. If you still have any question, uh, you can contact us through the email to info at sofasolder.com or service at sofasolder.com. And uh, thank you for your joining our training class today. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.